everyone. Good afternoon. I wish to thank Dr. Chavla and all the organizers of this conference for inviting me to deliver this talk. I have been asked to speak on how to investigate a new patient with diabetes. This is a common case scenario and uh, in day-to-day -day practice, we often see patients with suspected diabetes walk in and we are forced to take decisions on how to clinically evaluate the patient and then to order laboratory investigations in him. What I'll do in the next 15 minutes is to give a brief overview of how to investigate a new patient with diabetes, how to initially evaluate him first on clinical uh, grounds and later what are the laboratory tests that we need to order so that we have a comprehensive idea about how to manage the patient from there. Good afternoon. The various clinical presentations of diabetes have to be kept in mind as we see the patient with suspected diabetes. The classical symptoms as we all know include polyphagia, polydipsia, polyuria, nocturia, and weight loss. The other symptoms, however, or diabetes as we all know can present with several other presenting features unrelated to the classical symptoms. And these may include non-specific symptoms like tiredness, lack of interest in concentration, tingling sensations or numbness in the hands or feet for which there may be several causes including diabetes, patient having frequent infections, urinary, respiratory, skin, eye, genital, or any other place in the body, and a patient with slowly healing wounds. More importantly, the clinical presentations of diabetes could vary depending on how it takes onset. And this may help us in arriving at what type of diabetes the patient is suffering from. Presentations may be acute, or overt form in which the patient rapidly has onset of symptoms, usually in less than four to eight weeks before he presents to the physician. And usually the type one disease presents in this form with classical symptoms. A slower onset symptom presentation is much more common in type two diabetes, which is known as the chronic or the subtle form with which the patients can present. And often these patients may present for some other condition. And the last and not the least, there may be a hidden form where the patient may have silently ongoing hyperglycemia without any symptoms and such patients are detected only by screening by the laboratory test. So what are the initial questions in a suspected case of diabetes mellitus? Two, for first and foremost, there are two questions. Does the patient have diabetes mellitus or if at all a hyperglycemia is detected, is it stress hyperglycemia? How do we confirm the diagnosis of diabetes mellitus? To answer these questions, let's see. Hyperglycemia is often transient and can be secondary to minor or major stress, what is known as stress hyperglycemia. In a case scenario like this, we should ask for a repeat blood glucose and a glycated hemoglobin estimation. The best way to determine blood glucose, of course, is by a fasting plasma glucose and a two hour plasma glucose, which is measured after a 75 gram oral glucose challenge. This will not only confirm the hyperglycemia, but also help make a reliable diagnosis of diabetes mellitus. HPA1C will indicate the relatively long term nature of the hyperglycemia that has lasted at least three months and hence would help us rule out any acute stress hyperglycemia. So based on the uh, blood glucose measurements, how do we make a diagnosis of diabetes? A diagnosis of diabetes mellitus is confirmed by measuring oh. fasting plasma glucose and a two hour plasma glucose measured after 75 grams oral glucose. Diabetes can be diagnosed by any of the following criteria. A fasting plasma glucose equal to or greater than 126 milligram per deciliter, even without doing an OGTT. And if you do an OGTT, the same fasting criteria along with a two hour plasma glucose criteria of greater than or equal to 200 milligram per deciliter or a glycated hemoglobin of greater than or equal to 6.5 percent. If the patient has classical diabetes symptoms of course even a random plasma glucose of more than 200 milligram per deciliter would suffice for a diagnosis. 
Asymptomatic individuals with a single abnormal test should have the test repeated to confirm the diagnosis unless the result is unequivocally abnormal because this is a lifelong diagnosis and one has to be absolutely sure. A word of caution regarding A1C as a sole diagnostic criterion. Because these methods are not standardized and there's huge variation in the laboratories, unless we have an accurate method but like HPLC or other accurate methods, uh, one should not rely on A1C as the sole criteria for diagnosis. Also in a country like ours with a large population having iron deficiency anemia and also certain sections having hemoglobinopathies, we should be very cautious in interpreting borderline A1C values because the diagnosis depending on that would be harmful in the long run. In the initial evaluation of uh, diabetes, once you've made the diagnosis, a complete medical evaluation is important and should be performed to classify the diabetes, detect presence in diabetes complications and comorbidities, review previous treatment and glycemic control, all of which will help formulate a management plan and provide a basis for continuous care. You need to classify diagnosis and depending on the type I shown slide, for this number of factors would be useful and the onset of symptoms at diagnosis, weight prior to diagnosis, the weight at onset would help you make a diagnosis of type 2, blood glucose values and ketones at diagnosis uh, would help make a diagnosis of type 1, methods used for glycemic control, uh, if somebody is controlled in oral hypoglycemic agents that would favor a type 2 and so on. So all these methods, history of autoimmune diseases, history of acanthosis, favoring insulin resistance, a family history of diabetes, favoring type 2 and sometimes MODI, and a history of secondary causes of diabetes like pancreatic or endocrine disease will all help in making a diagnosis. Need to do. The other components, of course, in terms of medications are what are the medications he is taking, how does he respond to those medications, is he um, 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 adherent to them, what are the complementary or alternative medicines in addition he is using because that could vitiate your attempts at treating him, vaccinations. We need to also know whether he's using glucometers, CGMs or insulin pumps for his management and his psychosocial conditions, anxiety, depression, very important. But these days, uh, this is an important thing to assess because unless you manage these conditions, the, the glycemic control may always be deceptive or, you know, elusive. Uh, diabetes self-management education is important. Hypoglycemia awareness, hypoglycemia frequency, all of which is important, particularly in the childbearing age group pregnancy planning and history of uh, contraception other aspects also need to be considered. So there's a whole lot of things that we need to focus on while we're taking care of a patient. On examination in particular, we tend to focus on several things in the initial visit. First and foremost, the anthropometry, extremely important. Height and weight of the patient, which gives us an idea about the BMI gives us an idea about the patient is obese or non-obese or lean and depending on that we will decide the kind of treatment that we're going to plan. In children and adolescents a more important aspect is the growth and pubertal assessment because in the presence of diabetes the growth may be stunted or the puberty may be delayed so we need to have a careful examination and recording of these uh, changes. The waist is another important anthropometric measure because we all know that Indians in particular are more centrally obese and even though they may have a normal BMI, many of them would have a high waist. And as we know, the waist cutoffs of 19 males and, and um, uh, 18 centimeters in females uh, are important cutoffs for, for, for the predisposition to um, insulin resistance and diabetes and it's an important thing to measure. Blood pressure determination very important not only in the lying down position but also look for orthostatic hypertension because autonomic neuropathy may be an important thing to identify. Fundoscopic uh, examination is a part of clinical evaluation but at times we need to refer to eye specialists for a detailed uh, examination of the retina for any changes. Uh, these days of course we also have the advantage of, uh, of a fundus on camera by which we could um, record or easily photograph the fundus uh, and, and even get it interpreted by artificial intelligence and only in selected cases we need to get it confirmed by an ortho ophthalmologist saves a lot of trouble for the patient and the treating diabetologist as well.
thyroid palpation, especially in, in patients with type 1 disease for autoimmune thyroid disease. Skin examination, as I already said, look for acanthosis nigrosis or nigricans for, for insulin resistance. Insulin injection sites are very important because we need to know whether there is any lipodystrophy or, or, or um, other changes which might hinder treatment. And then a comprehensive foot examination. In a diabetic patient, we always say that foot examination is most important. We might act as well start our examination from the foot rather from the head as we do in clinical uh, conditions. Visual inspection for skin integrity, callus formation, foot deformity, ulcers and so on. Look for um, peripheral arterial disease, particularly for, for the pulses, the, the leg pulses in addition to foot pulses in addition to others and refer for an ABI investigation wherever indicated, especially if these are showing some clues or the patient has had a longer history of type 2 diabetes mellitus. Determination of temperature, vibration, print prick sensation and a 10 gram monofilament examination is an essential part of clinical examination of all such patients with diabetes. And the presence or absence of patellar or achilles reflex is important early indicator of diabetic neuropathy. It could be important clues about how to go about it. And sometimes a detailed neurological examination might also tell you if the patient has additional risk factors for a diabetic foot ulcer, which might be important in planning his management. This is a, a slide just showing how the waist is measured. It's generally, as we all know, measured midway between the lower part of the, uh, of the thoracic cage and the, um, anterior, and the, and the ilia crest. Horizontally, it's preferably with a non-stretchable tape uh, in, at the end of expiration and, and this um, fairly well gives an idea about abdominal obesity and it's often uh, not uncommon to find this abnormal in Indian patients. This is just a slide to show how to examine or look for peripheral pulses and all of these are important in a diabetic patient. The ankle jerk as I was telling you is an important part of examination, tuning fork examination is important joint position sense again very important to detect early neuropathy and monofilament testing is one of the very important measures which helps us determine especially it's done in five sites as we all know and and um, uh, if they are all positive it, it uh, says that the foot is normal but if you have an abnormal uh, um, or an absent monofilament at any of these sites or one or more of these sites or two or more of these sites it suggests an at-risk foot for or foot ulcer and we need to focus on diabetes foot care in all these individuals and this is this goes a long way in preventing foot complications this is a slide of acanthosis nigricans which predisposes uh, or, or which suggests insulin resistance this is a prayer sign which we often do in clinical examination investigation which tells us about um, um, uh, or it gives an indirect clue to um, long-term complications or microvascular complications in a patient with type 2 diabetes. It's mainly because of a tendon thickening of the tendon sheaths by which the patient cannot, you know, uh, uh, oppose both the palms uh, as if for prayer. Having done all this clinical investigation, then we have to definitely investigate the patient uh, from the labs. And if not available within the past two to three months in A1C, a test is uh, definitely required. And this is, uh, gives an idea about the long-term glycemic control and where, what do we need to do about uh, it in, in future as we plan treatment. If the following test results are not available or these tests were not performed in the previous year, the clinician should also perform a fasting lipid profile, including total cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, and HDL cholesterol levels, as, as well as triglyceride levels. To, to look for uh, dyslipidemia, liver function tests uh, uh, for any effects or for uh, underlying um, NAFLD, urine albumin uh, creatinine ratio to look for early indications for nephropathy, a serum creatinine and a calculated GFR again to look for uh, diabetic kidney disease in patients with type 1 in particular or in patients with dyslipidemia or in women of more than uh, 50 years of age, a thyroid stimulating hormone as a screening test for thyroid dysfunction may also be in order. So what we've actually done in the course of the last 14-15 minutes is 
to recapitulate uh, details of clinical evaluation of a patient of diabetes in his initial visit, which is most important, most crucial, and at many times, not only this, we also need to focus on educating the patient right at the initial visit, and then undergoes undertake certain laboratory investigations. The entire idea of this investigation at the first visit is to to evaluate the diabetic patient's condition, level of glycemic control, presence of other complications or comorbidities so that we can plan treatment appropriately for a particular patient. We also need, are focusing on the you know, type of diabetes because that will also decide the type of treatment. And we're focusing also on his, his, his basic um, social and psychological aspects and his, and, and his behavior, which will help us decide how to tackle uh, his management. Thank you.